The effect that this has on the cardiac myocyte is that it takes longer for the cardiac myocyte to fire, for it to go through contraction. This happens in the autorhythmic cells in the heart, and those autorhythmic cells set up the heartbeat. If we hyperpolarize the membrane, it takes longer for those cells to get the, the depolarization that brings about contraction. So ultimately what it does, we start out with this heartbeat, and when these receptors are activated, we end up with a slower heartbeat. So it decreases the cardiac rate. That's going to be the effect. By hyperpolarizing the membrane, we end up decreasing the heart rate. So that's some molecular biology behind how acetylcholine works for a nicotinic receptor and for a muscarinic receptor. And this is at least one specific example of why it's important to know for what you may ultimately end up doing because these um, muscarinic receptors in the heart at least lead to a decrease in cardiac rate. To give you an example of how we can interfere with this, um, atropine is a drug that is an anticholinergic. It inhibits this receptor, so the acetylcholine can't bind to it and decrease the heart rate. So if you inject someone with atropine, you're going to inhibit this effect. Their heart rate is not going to be decreased. In fact, it's going to be increased if you use atropine. So that gives you a real life example of where we can use this knowledge in a drug format to help somebody increase their heart rate if we need to. And that's the major picture for different types of receptors and how one neurotransmitter can have different effects in different parts of the body because of different receptors. The nicotinic receptor versus a muscarinic receptor. Not all muscarinic receptors, by the way, are inhibitory or lead to inhibitory postsynaptic potentials, but the example I used here did. So that's acetylcholine and two receptors for acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, remember, is the um, neuro, neurotransmitter of muscle contraction also. And it's also important in various places in the brain. I guess I'll leave this G protein coupled receptor thing up here because I'll refer back to it in a minute. Um, Another neurotransmitter I want you to know a little bit about is GABA. And GABA is the major inhibitory major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the CNS. in the brain. And that's really all I want you to know about it, at least at this point. The next thing I want to talk about is actually a class of uh, neurotransmitters. And those are monoamines. And to give you an example of a monoamine, Epinephrine is a monoamine. Epinephrine, you could think of, um, oh, excuse me, as a neurotransmitter, it's the one that's actually released from neurons is called norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. Epinephrine is the hormone version, has a very similar molecular structure, and it binds to the same receptors, but epinephrine is the hormone. Norepinephrine is released by neurons and synaptic clefts, the way we've talked about. You could think of this as the neurotransmitter.
of the sympathetic division of the PNS. Sorry, there are two different major divisions to the peripheral nervous system. There's the autonomic, or excuse me, there's the parasympathetic division and the sympathetic division. You can think of the parasympathetic division as the rest and digest side of things. It stimulates the digestive system, it dampens breathing, it dampens heart rate. Um, so it's the, I think of it as the couch potato, sit and watch TV and eat chips. Um, bathroom functions are also handled by the parasympathetic division of the nervous system. So it's your poop and pee division too, I guess. The sympathetic division, um, not sympathetid, I am having so many spelling issues today. Sympathetic. The sympathetic division you can think of as the running from a tiger division. This is the division that increases heart rate, increases breathing rate, dilates pupils, um, actually constricts sphincters. Um, so it's not really true that when you're scared you'll pee your pants. In fact, it's the opposite. Um, and if you think about it, that makes sense because Cedar Point and other parks of that type would be completely different if we peed our pants when we were scared. You'd have to buy Depends before you go visit. Um, sympathetic division also um, cha causes changes in blood flow. It decreases blood flow to the extremities um, and to the skin, but it increases blood flow to major vital organs and to the, and to the skeletal muscles of the body. So those are the two different major divisions, and they have their own specific neurotransmitters. Norepinephrine is the major transmitter for the sympathetic division, and for the parasympathetic division, it's actually acetylcholine. Another thing to know about sympathetic versus parasympathetic, I talk about them like sympathetic, oh my gosh, scared, um, and parasympathetic is relaxing, digesting. In reality, they both work together all the time to help maintain homeostatic balance. So it's fun to talk about, in, talk about them in the extremes, and it helps you understand to talk about them in the, in the extremes. But they both work together uh, most of the time to help maintain that balance, that homeostasis that we need. OK, the other monoamine that I would like you to know is dopamine. And one of the importances of dopamine, dopamine, um, or two of the impo important parts of important <laughs> functions of dopamine. One is mood elevation. So if you're feeling good and happy, probably your, your dopamine levels are higher, at least in certain parts of your brain. Um, and dopamine is also important for muscle coordination. If if neurons within your brain that are supposed to make dopamine in order to help control muscles, if they don't produce the right amount of dopamine or if they degrade, then you end up with a disorder which is called Parkinson's disease. So dopamine is important for muscle coordination. In terms of mood elevation, uh, some of these drugs that we can give depressed individuals will help dopamine levels increase in their brains and that helps um, to alleviate some of their depression. So those are the monoamines. Um, the next category are neuropeptides. And for neuropeptides, there's only one that I have my students know, and that's beta endorphin. And beta endorphin um, may be one of the major reasons that uh, somebody who runs feels good when they're running or the good feelings that come from exercise. And I think that's all I really had listed for you to know about that. Let me make sure, though. Oh, I'm sorry. It also suppresses pain. It's a pain, it's a pain suppressor. So... I don't know if there's drugs out there that do this, but you could imagine taking a drug that would help increase endorphin levels that might help with chronic pain or with fibromyalgia or something like that. 
And I think that's it for the neurotransmitters. Um, I gave you an example for some of the mechanisms for how they work using acetylcholine. Um, and I gave you some specific neurotransmitters to know in terms of some of the effects that they have. We've only scratched the surface and we've barely scratched the surface. So later in life you may learn a lot more about these things. Um, I said I'd leave G-protein coupled receptor up there. I apologize, I forgot to mention it at the time. Um, epinephrine works through G-protein coupled receptors. And remember that the G-protein coupled receptor releases that G-protein and then the G-protein activates something else. For the uh, epinephrine receptor, the receptor is the same in most cells. It releases the G-protein. It's that next protein that differs. If it's a potassium channel, then we're going to see hyperpolarization in the cell. If it's a sodium channel of some kind, or a chloride channel, then, we're gonna, then we may see um, an excitatory postsynaptic potential. So I guess just remember that um, epinephrine works through G-protein coupled receptors. And that concludes all I really want you to know about uh, neurotransmitters. As always, if there's any questions, comments, please feel free to contact me. Thanks again for watching.